So when we use the word resolution, you know, resolution, there is a word in resolution means resolve. Yeah. Resolve. And in the word resolve is solve. So if you make a resolution to resolve and solve a problem, it ain't done till it's solved. That's right. <laughs> right? It's not done. And I have this issue because many people start weight loss programs. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main one. Ooh, I'm going to lose my 20 pounds. I'm going to lose my 30 pounds. Okay? So they say, okay, I'm going to lose. So we got January 1st. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not even going to do it in the holidays. That's what they tell me. Because I always say, start now. So no, 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 no. I got to go to the holidays. I got Christmas. I got to my friends. I got to do New Year's. I'm going to start January 1st. Okay? So we got 100 people starting January 1st. By the time we get to January 20, <laughs> we got about five people still. Uh, we got about five people left. Okay? Because words, thank you. Words don't mean anything. It's words are beginning. Okay? Words are beginning. I have people who want to lose weight. And they say, I ask them, how much you want to lose? Oh, I don't know. I just, I just, I just want to lose some weight. Okay? <laughs> and I explain to them, you have to have a destination. You don't just get in your car and drive. You know, mm -hmm. you have to know where you're going. Yeah. So I insist that you make a destination with weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. But it's still only words. It doesn't become reality until it becomes the act upon it. Yeah. We have to do some kind of Talk about vitals. And then I'm going to add on to it the most important numbers that you want to have tested when you see your doctor. Okay? And everyone here has been to the doctor sometime or another. And they, if they're really good doctors, they'll give you a copy of your lab test, right? Okay. And then you look at it, and it has all these numbers going down, right? Do y'all know what all those numbers mean? Okay, they'll say your cholesterol's high, but do they tell you that? What it's supposed to be. What should it be? Yeah. They'll just say, oh, it's high. Well, okay. Does anybody know what it actually should be? And more importantly, why should it be? So. One of the numbers on those lab sheets, so when you do labs, there are about four important lab tests that you should get at least, at least once a year. Important lab tests you should get at least once a year as what we call baseline. The first one you want to get is your lipids. Now, they like to lump cholesterol yes. under lipids. But cholesterol is only one test in lipids. And just as it sounds, lipids, it's fat, okay? <laughs> lipids is another word for fat. And stop giving fat a bad name, okay? We actually need a certain amount of fat in our body to insulate our body, okay? What I mean by insulate is keep us warm. You need a layer of fat. Under your skin, you have some fat to nice, give you nice cushion, give you warmth. When you lose too much fat, you start to look at my grandma and say, what the way she maga? <laughs> look at our color bone. You can't see our color bone. <laughs> You start, or somebody said, oh, I can see her veins in her neck. <laughs> okay? You've lost too much because you need the insulation and you also need the protection of skin, a little bit of fat, and then to your muscle, right? So lipids is only 
Cholesterol is only one, so let's put cholesterol. But another one you want to know is LDL and HDL. These are the ones that are real important. Under the term lipids, anybody know cholesterol, what the number should be? They never told you? So they tell you to lower it. What should it be? Ideally, we want this number under 200. Okay? Under 200. Now, cholesterol, some people actually make more than other people. There's some families that make more. And if you're that type of family, your numbers may run in like 300, 400, 600. Your life should never include eating anything fatty mm -hmm. because you already make more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep this number under 200. Question. How do you know if you're that type of person? Every time, the question is, how do you know if you have what we call familial hypercholesterolemia? That's where in your family, Grandmother, uncle, cousin, auntie, when they get their blood drawn and you look at the blood, it has a, it looks like you just poured butter in it. It really does. You get, it's red and then at the top, instead of it being clear, it looks like butter. Because their body and in their genes, they're, they make cholesterol. They make the fat. So you don't want to eat any fat. And every time you do your blood work, it's 400, 500. It can even be 1,000. Oh, Lord. Yes. Um, I've heard doctors tell me when you have good cholesterol, yes. bad cholesterol. Yes. So we're getting to the lipids, and you're absolutely right. When they talk about, now the other number is the LDL. These are the two numbers you really want to get a handle on. And these numbers, the LDL, we're going to give a sad face. The H, meaning happy. This one gets a happy face. You want this number as high as possible. You want this one, ideally, for me, over 50. They'll say 45, but I'm going to tell you 50. Easy to remember. The LDL, especially if you have diabetes or heart disease, you want under 100. This is a sad character. This is the one that causes a traffic jam in your blood vessels. This is the one, this is your veins, that clogs it up, and then when you try to get the blood through it, it's sluggish and will increase your pressure increase swellings in your legs and cause heart attacks, especially if you have diabetes. You don't want a combination of diabetes and high cholesterol, okay? And these are the numbers you want to have. Question. What's that thing on your arm, Dr. Paul? Oh. Yeah. Oh, you know, like my new, my new yeah. arm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just managing my muscles. <laughs> it's stimulating my muscles. No, not you, not you, not you. Lie, lie, lie. That's going to take us to the next real number you should get when you go. Is called the hemoglobin A1C. Okay? And what we're talking about here is glucose. Glucose on the lab sheet that I was telling you about, one of the words they're gonna say is glucose. And then they may ask you to do a hemoglobin A1C. Glucose tells you what your blood sugar is right at that moment. So it's one moment in time. Give me one moment in time. So this is what many patients do. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. They're gonna draw my blood. I'm not having no ice cream, no cake, no rice, no potato. <laughs> so that when I go, my sugar's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. This is another word for sugar, right? How sweet is your system? 
The problem with sugar and glucose that I have on here is called a continuous glucose monitor. Mean it's registering what my blood sugar is doing all day long. It's an excellent device if you have diabetes and your blood sugar is up, down, up, down, up, down, and you feel lightheaded, you feel dizzy. Should I take my insulin? I don't know. Should I? Can I eat this? It's excellent because if you're about to have a meal, you can take your phone, put it on the device, and it will tell you immediately what your blood sugar is in that moment. So you don't have to poke yourself? No sticking your finger. What the, what's the name of they have a number of them. One is called Dexon. This one is called Freestyle. And the numbers go directly to your telephone. I like it because I know about you, and I, I hear my patients. My fingers are numb from all the sticking that I have to do. My hawks for one. I can't feel my fingers anymore. Or they get so hard because you've sucked them so much throughout the years. And I hate to say it, and I'm just putting a word out to all the insurance companies. You need to give this away. They need to give it away to all the diabetic patients. Because, how, raise your hand, if you had to stick yourself versus just using your phone and doing this, which would you prefer? Your phone. And imagine you're about to eat, right? You get a nice big plate of food. You got rice, you got your meat, you got your vegetables. And you say, you know what? Let me check my sugar. Oops, it's 250. Uh oh. We're not having no rice today. No, no. We're not having no iced tea. But what if it's 70? Yes. If it's 70, you can now you can have your rice. We're not talking to you, Siri. I need you to stop. <laughs> you can choose better, you can make better decisions. You're freed. You also don't have to go to your, your closet or work your bag and find the machine, stick the needle in, poke yourself, drop, oh man, I messed up, poke yourself again. Continuous. Try and get it if you're diabetic. It'll make your life so much easier. Yes. Why don't the insurance give it out? How can how can someone get one? Okay. And do you give them out at your office? Okay. <laughs> Look, we've had this conversation. The good stuff may <coughs> They don't give it away because it costs money. Right? Right, right. And I'm not gonna say that some people taking medicines, but I know just in my practice, when I have people who use a monitor. They go from being totally out of control with their blood sugar to being in control. Because now you're aware of what's going on. You wake up in the middle of the night, you feel lightheaded and dizzy, you check it, and you know you need to get up and have something to eat. Instead of walk, getting up and fainting because you might have become hypoglycemic, which is when the cost is one of the reasons why people, they usually don't give it away. The company that I'm wearing right now is called Freestyle, and they will give these monitors, you only put them on every 14 days. Can you imagine that? You just take this off, and every 14 days you just put another one on? Nice. You can exercise with it, you can bathe with it. Nice. I'm like, versus... So you could go to the doctor and Yes, but you do need a prescription. They don't want to give you. They, the, um, the makers have given me a couple samples in my office of these the machines, but if they won't pay for it, your insurance won't pay for it, the company has coupons that you'll never pay more than $75. But think about it. You'll get two monitors that last the whole month, and it's $75. Yeah, and I know those strips can cost up to a hundred dollars. I fear that it's sticky. <laughs> yeah. So I like it only because you gain more control. And when you know I'm about to eat something, and your monitor is saying 300, you just gonna push that baby away. You know? Can I some water, please? You know? Yeah. You also can have better conversations with your doctor because you're being recorded on your phone. You can literally give your doctor your phone and they can see what your numbers are running. 
So then we can say, hey, let's adjust your insulin or adjust your medication. Way better than bring that sheet of paper in where you wrote the numbers down. Is that a skin? Is it? Yeah, it's in my skin. See, it's not moving. Okay. She mean, is it like a sticker or is it poked into your skin? Oh, you do it yourself. Yeah, just, it's just like a band-aid. Yes, yeah. oh, and I'm okay. telling you, I would lie to you. It did not hurt. Uh -huh. I didn't even feel it. You got needles on it? Mm -hmm. It has a little tiny needle that's that sticks in your skin. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. now, is there anybody complaining of having any type of infection from having that? I have, the only thing that I will be honest, when I will, I, and I got it, why did I get it? I'm not diabetic. But, but I'm wearing it because I get lightheaded and dizzy throughout the day because bad behavior. I don't eat regularly. And I'll be at the work and I'll be going, going, going. The next thing I know, I'm crabby, pabby in the office. And then, then I feel lightheaded and dizzy. So when they came, they said it's not only used for people who are diabetic, but people who suffer from lightheaded and dizziness or what I have is hypoglycemia, where my sugar drops Drop. yeah. to like 57 and 60, mm -hmm. you know? So it helps me monitor when I really need to stop and eat something. Eat something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm working on the behavior. Yes. So I can eat more regular. I don't eat three meals. I, I don't know, I just eat when I want something right. to eat. And you don't have to eat three it. meals, but you do have to listen to your body because your body will tell you. Yeah. I had the bad behavior of waiting till it kicks me yes. before <laughs> before I listen. Shoot. You know, so I'm working on that. So this helps me to know because it will talk to me. This cereal will start yelling, alert, alert, alert. Your blood sugar. It will tell you if your blood sugar is starting to drop. But I don't suffer. Yeah. I suffer with mm -hmm. blood, high blood pressure and stuff like that. I'm a diabetic. So this will be excellent. Now I wish it come out with one for your blood pressure. That would be great. You come to the office and you get a glucose, but glucose only tells you that day. This number, the hemoglobin A1C, I love it because it tells you what your blood sugar is doing over three months. It's an average. So you can drop, dress right. You can get it together for a day. All day tomorrow, I'm not going to eat anything. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go to Dr. Powell. She's going to check my sugar. It's going to be good. But the hemoglobin in C don't lie. It tells me that over the past three months, you've been good or bad. So what numbers do you want here? What number? Uh, if you, yes? Anybody? Uh, mm -hmm. Mine is always <coughs> one time mine is five <coughs> Nice. And most of this is 6.2. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come up here so that everybody, does everyone can see here? Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're diabetic? This goes into the talk about diabetes, oh, yeah. okay? There's what we call normal, meaning you're not diabetic, which means the, this number is less than 5.4, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a thing called pre-diabetes, right before you step over the train tracks. And that runs from over 5.4 all the way to 6.4. You're in the pre-range. That's warning, that's the train coming down the track and it's telling you get it together because you're going to become diabetic. So when you see your numbers starting to go above 5.4, Hovering around 6, 6.2, 6.3, you're going towards diabetes, right? And that has something to do with borderline? This is borderline. This is border. You're on the border. This is borderline. Okay? Don't live on the border. No. Live in the continent, <laughs> you know? Don't want to be bordered. Now, once it goes above, 6.5, you're diabetic. Yeah. And you can argue with me, you can yell at me. No, I'm not diabetic, Dr. Powell. <laughs> okay, <coughs> what does the number say? <coughs> and what does that mean? It means your body is having a hard time processing sugar. 
And how do you know? Thirsty all the time, peeing all the time, losing weight. This is not the way to lose weight. You will lose weight once your sugar starts rising. Your vision starts getting blurry. Don't try and get glasses if your blood sugar is out of control. Because she said, "Don't try to get glasses." No, you just it's it 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 Yeah, you go buy glasses when the sugar. Y'all are buying glasses. No, always get different glasses, and the sugar out of control. <laughs> it will make your vision blurry. Oh. So get in control, then go get your glasses. Oh, okay. there it is. Yeah, it's true. Same thing with your pressure. Yeah. Don't go, don't go getting glasses if your blood pressure is high. I don't suffer with that. Yeah. I, I really don't. I just eat wrong. If I want Kool-Aid, I, I got to act. I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing. Not the Kool-Aid. That's my problem. Do you like Crystal Light? Do you like Crystal Light? I'm not, uh, yeah, you have that word up there, consistent. Oh, okay. Because Crystal Light has a nice good. lemonade. Yes, yes. They have I a know. really good one. I do this, but yeah. I, I'm not consistent okay. with what, whatever. I'm not consistent. Resolve that he okay. needs to consist. Resolve, yes, I do. Uh, uh, yeah, when you go in the bathroom all the time, you're being, 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 in the, not because you're taking water medicine. No, no, no. Night, day, all day. No, no, wait, 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 wait. This is just at nighttime. You know, like I have to get up and go to the bathroom three or four times a night. Yes. So does that have anything to do with diabetes? Yeah. It's very possible, but you definitely want to check it out because there are a lot of things. That, the question is, what if you're urinating at night a lot? A couple things. One, are you drinking two hours before you go to bed? Mm -hmm. Stop drinking two hours before you go to bed if your person has to get up all the time. Two, don't take your water pill, you know, past six o'clock. Don't take water pill. Because if you take it, you're going to be pee. Okay? But I don't take water pills. Yeah. But, but if I you're, drink water night. Before oh. bed? No, I'm like doing today. Yes. If I drink two bottles of water, maybe sometimes three. So it don't hit me till night time. Right. So right before you go to bed, you want to empty your bladder completely. I do that. Good. And then when you get up. So yeah, I still get them every hour on the hour. Do that. Check. The other thing, another reason where you might have frequent urination if you're not diabetic, check if you have a bladder <coughs> infection. Mm -hmm. That's just on the side. Bladder infections, you may not burn, you may not hurt, but going all the time could be a sign, so you may want to check it out, okay? But back to our numbers. We want to stay away from the border, and the test that you want to order is a hemoglobin A1C, which tells what three months is doing. Glucose is just that moment, and the continuous monitor, like the one I'm wearing, tells me what is my sugar doing right now. And you can check it at any time. Now the final number that you want to know, well they're not final, but there are two other numbers that you really want to know when you go to your doctor and they draw your blood. Okay? If you are diabetic or have high blood pressure, there's a test called micro, micro albumin. Okay, and this is in your urine. Okay, it's a urine test. Basically what they'll do, you'll go pee in a cup like you always do, and they send it to the lab, and what they're looking is, are you spilling protein? <coughs> protein in your urine, right? Not bacteria, bacteria is for infection. But are you getting protein? When you start getting protein, lots of it in your urine, your kidneys are being damaged. Mm -hmm. And so high blood pressure and diabetes can affect your kidneys. Mm -hmm. And that's an early sign by checking the microalbumin, we can start doing taking steps to help the kidneys so they don't fail and you don't end up on dialysis. A lot of people think only diabetes ends up on dialysis. Hypertension not controlled for a long time can lead to diabetes, I mean to dialysis also, okay? So we've got lipids you wanna check, hemoglobin A1C, microalbumin, and then the other one that we wanna check 
is a thing called, and I'm gonna erase this so that uh, we can. Ice crushing, cold all the time, tired. Wake up, tired. Sleep 10 hours, still tired. That's me. <laughs> Weak all the time, dizzy, tired, eating ice, always cold. You may want to consider, am I anemic? 